there folks, welcome to another virtual discovery walk with Montana Outdoor Science School and the Gallatin Valley Land Trust. Every spring these two organizations get together, they uh, host a walk that families can attend and on these walks a moss instructor will talk about various science knowledge about animals, plants, uh, anything that's non-living as well. And there's always some kind of lesson associated with these that kids can learn from. On today's walk, I am at Sourdough Trail, and I am going on an amphibious adventure. I'm hoping to find amphibians of some kind here. Sourdough Creek is not the only place you could go out and look for amphibians. There are all kinds of trails around Bozeman or, and the Gallatin area. There are also tons and tons of amphibians across the state of Montana. So we have salamanders, newts, toads, frogs. They live at all kinds of different elevations. They live in all different kinds of waters. Uh, could be tepid waters, could be shallow waters, might be high, clear, cold mountain streams. So there's all kinds of amphibians out there. You just have to go out and try and see them. The root word for amphibians comes from a word meaning to be both in land and in water. Uh, here we can find some water as well as some land and this is exactly the kind of thing I'm looking for. Frogs of course can be land critters. They uh, typically will run into the water, hide in the water, take shelter in the water, but anything that is younger than that adult stage needs to be living in the water and there's a few reasons why. One reason is frogs need to lay their eggs in water. The eggs that they lay don't have a protective shell the way reptile shells do, so they need to stay moist, so water is key for them there. The second reason is once those eggs hatch, they have young that only have gills, and so they have to be able to breathe in the water and must stay in the water for a time. Eventually though, all amphibians go through a process of metamorphosis, which means to transform, and this is really neat about amphibians. They will actually turn entirely into a different critter. They'll go from being aquatic and having gills and also having no legs, and they'll go to having legs, lungs, and being able to walk around on the land. So they're pretty neat critters. I'm here at the water's edge looking through the underbrush for any signs of movement. I'm also thinking that this water's moving a little too fast to be trying to find frogs right here, or even especially to find frog eggs. Uh, this is the right elevation in the right region though for Columbia spotted frogs, so that's probably the ones I will most likely see uh, in the Sour Creek Trail area. I'm gonna keep going up trail and see what other water areas I can find. I found some really still water. I'm a little worried it might not be deep enough for frog or salamander activity, but I'm gonna go take a look anyway. So this is the area that I thought might have some frogs. I'm thinking though, it's a little too shallow and a little too temporary, and I'm not seeing any kind of movement in here. While looking for amphibians, I'm not just thinking about the types of water sources they may take shelter in, I'm also thinking about other things that they need in their habitat. So I'm thinking of the food they may be eating, which is going to be all kinds of various invertebrates, uh, aquatic invertebrates, insects. I'm also thinking about the space that they may need. It could be that us being this close to trail, where a lot of people walk, a lot of dogs walk, maybe we need to go further uphill and also find a place that is a little bit quieter as far as human traffic goes. Totally a food source for some frogs and toads. I see an ant hill here, and if there were ants, that would totally be something frogs or salamanders might eat. <gasps> is that a frog? It's not a frog. However, this is kind of what I'm looking for. Quiet water that's not being disturbed too much. Uh, this stuff is right on trail, so I'm gonna head up further, see if there's any little offshoots off trail that may lead me to some nice quiet water just like this here. While we look for amphibians, let's talk about why amphibians need to be near water. It's not just their eggs, it's not just their larvae, it's also the adults that need to be near water too. Part of that is because that's where often they'll find food at, but part of it too is that they need to keep their skin as moist as they can. Reason being, frogs, toads, uh, salamanders, they have very delicate skin that they're able to actually breathe through. Up to 50% of the oxygen that an amphibian gets is through its skin. I think that's pretty cool. I wish I could breathe through my skin. 
clean water is not just important for amphibians, but it's also important for people. Sourdough Creek is one of the sources of water that we in Bozeman get our water from. This area all through here is directly uh, a part of our watershed. It's where our water comes from. We drink this water. There's a, uh, a cleaning facility, a water treatment facility down the road yonder. So just keep in mind keeping your environment clean, not just for the animals, but also for yourself. While you're on trail though, don't forget to admire all the other cool things that you might see out there. Let's take a look at that morning moon right there. That is incredible. It's not just things you see every now and again. Stop to listen to all the birds that are around you. Check it out folks, we got some sedimentary rock layers over here. Although thinking about it, it could be metamorphic layers. The more I'm looking at rocks from this area, the more I'm thinking that they are metamorphic rocks. Look at all those crystals in there. Oh, pretty flowers. Canadian Mayflower. That's that one right there. Also, it's really poisonous, so don't touch it. See you later, deadly flower. So it seems to me that we're not gonna find any frogs uh, on Sourdough Creek Trail, uh, and that's okay. There's a lot of other places that I know where to find frogs. Um, but furthermore, I know that if you did get to the top of this Sourdough Trail uh, at Mystic Lake, there are a ton of frogs. I also know that there's a pair of beavers up there. They may even have a family this year. I've definitely seen that before. Unfortunately, I just don't have the time today to go walk all the way up there. Uh, but nevertheless, that is something that you could do on your own time with your family. It isn't to say that there aren't frogs along the Sourdough Creek Trail. Maybe that we're here just the wrong time of day or the wrong time of the year. Um, I do know though that there are frogs up at the top at Mystic Lake, which is pretty neat. Even if we didn't find any frogs, that's still okay. We still got out in nature. We still got out on the trails, did a little exploring, and maybe even learned some things. Today I learned what a Canadian Mayflower is. I have always seen those flowers. I've seen those plants. I just had never known what they were called. I had also never known that they were super highly poisonous. So all good things to know, good things to learn while you're out on trail. And I mean, who doesn't want to get out on a day like this? It's just so beautiful out. Look at that sky, bright sunshine. It's going to be a great day. So I've come to this pond just at the foothills of the Bridgers. I've seen frogs here before. I'm pretty confident I can find some today. Let's see what there might be out there. If not frogs, there may be tadpoles at the very least. So I wasn't able to catch a frog. However, it does bring to question what you need in order to view frogs up close. If you are gonna go catching frogs, it's really important that you not touch them with your hands. Reason being, their skin is very moist, it's very sensitive to things. I mean, imagine if you could breathe through your skin, how easy it is to absorb any other material through your skin. Uh, the frogs and toads and other amphibians, they shouldn't be handled with bare hands because anything on our hands, sunscreen, lotion, even just natural oils that come off of us can disturb that animal. So it's really important to be able to have a net and a bucket. Even though I didn't catch a frog, I did find a frog still and I also found other uh, signs that a frog has inhabited this pond here. Let me show y'all what I found. So in the weeds here and then the cattails and grasses, there is this jelly-like material floating around underneath this cattail. I wonder if y'all can see the silhouette of it. It is full of little tiny frog eggs. There's also tons of macroinvertebrates. There is a snail right there. There's also a little uh, water insect floating around in there. These are things that uh, frogs may very well eat. But to top it all off, there's a frog sitting out there. Let's see if I can get a zoom in on him. There he is. There's the frog. He's just a little too far away for me to fetch, so I'm going to leave him there, or her. I'm not going to disturb that frog today. 
but nevertheless we have found an amphibian. That one I believe is a Columbia spotted frog. As a last little treat for today's video, I'm happy to introduce our newest member of the Moss Animal Ambassador team. We were able to adopt a rescue toad, and he is really special because he's actually a native Montana toad, uh, which is very cool. He does have the typical warts that you see on toads, uh, and those warts actually contain a toxin that keeps him from being uh, eaten by predators. It has a bitter taste to a lot of animals and so critters typically won't go after him. You can see one of the glands really well. They have these glands called parotid glands and that's right behind his eye here. He has one on the other side as well. Um, unfortunately he cannot be re released into the wild as he has been in captivity pretty much his entire life. He's about four years old now, but we were lucky enough to be able to adopt him and he is now able to be a part of our educational animal team. Um, a lot of people don't realize that toads can be toxic uh, to the touch. You shouldn't ever touch amphibians with your bare hands, which is why I'm wearing gloves, but it's also not just for their safety, but also for your safety. You don't want to accidentally uh, become in con or get into contact with that toxin there. So there's our newest addition to the team. Thanks for joining us for another virtual discovery walk. Uh, be sure to tune in next week for our last virtual discovery walk. Thank you for all joining us throughout the spring for these. I uh, wish we could have done them in person, but perhaps next year. Thanks for watching everybody.